Party uh, forming uh, for this election sort of in response to just the gross lack of knowledge that's gone into this situation. And it's great to hear these positions from Greens and Labor, which have shifted significantly and are obviously actively evolving positions. It's good that they're allowing the public to educate them, but it really is, um, you know, the, the lack of technical knowledge of such an important thing. There's not a lot of excuse for it. So I'm glad to see that movement. Um, but for those of us from minutes, you know, long ago, um, there's more to it than that. Like what Andrew is saying, what people haven't said yet from these political parties is that ideas should be free. Um, intellectual property, those two words together, should be anathema yeah. to any, you know, person who loves freedom and creativity. Yeah. And, um, you know, the supposedly honorable Sir Peter Jackson, um, you know, is showing, uh, you know, where his real sense of really offshoring profits to these mega corporations, aided and abetted by, you know, the major political parties that elevate him to the status of a national hero, uh, you know, when he's plundering our newest natural resource offshore. Um, so the Pirate Party stands firmly against all of this. Um, we'd love to sign up as many members as possible to try to officially register for this election. Uh, having the pirate flag on the ballot uh, for this election in New Zealand would send us about how much influence we have, but having that pirate flag on the ballot itself would send a huge message to the people of this country that this is a serious issue, and uh, the people who are in charge of it need to stand up and take a lot more notice. And I like to think of the internet, I mean, I'm not a young person, I'm 29, but even people of my generation know that the internet to us is like a library. It's not a store. It's not the iTunes store, it's not the Amazon store, it's a library. And check something out for free, be it a book or a DVD, and read it at my leisure. Why can I not do that electronically? I can go back there as many times as I want, get it free again. What does it matter if I, you know, download it to look at it when I want? It's not like I'm trying to print out a bunch of copies to sell them for a profit motive. And this is where the distinction needs to be. So to, you know, get rid of the whole internet or make it, you know, break it on purpose so it doesn't work very well, um, just to, to, it's like a, a drift net to, you know, scrape up out everything out of the whole sea to get rid of some, uh, you know, bad predator or something. And if, if we can't, like, People of my generation and younger, they want to use the internet like a library, and they're going to no matter what. No one is going to tell me that I am not allowed to enrich my knowledge of culture or science because I don't have enough money. You know, no paywall is going to stop me from accessing that journal article. I w w will download pirated torrents of movies and, you know, concerts, performances, that I cannot otherwise afford to see. You know, I don't feel like it's the domain of the moneyed elite to, uh, you know, drip feed me little commentary on all this wonderful content out there. And um, if I can go to the library and check it out in a physical form, why can I not do that in an electronic form? And that should be, I mean, that just seems obvious. And uh, if we're, you know, if we're gonna have um, just to prevent people from, uh, you know, make sure everyone pays their dollar each time they want to learn something new, then that's crazy. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good week, everybody. It's good.